let's do a Z370 5 gigahertz overclocking guide. And beyond. So I've got a Gigabyte Aorus um, Z370 Gaming 7 and Intel Core i7 8700K. I'm going to overclock it to uh, 5 gigahertz using the guide. So we're going to start with advanced frequency settings and in there set uh, 100 megahertz base clock. Uh, after that, we need to set the CPU multiplier to 50. So 50 times 100 is our five gigahertz uh, uh, CPU speed. Uh, also, uh, the guide suggests setting ARM core ratio to 40 for four gigahertz and then 45 or 44, whatever it is that you end up getting stable. I've gotten both stable, but I've <coughs> I'm using this profile and four gigahertz is good enough. It's not going to impact on performance as much as the CPU frequency. Uh, after that, we scroll down to all the speed steps and uh, <coughs> um, power management features basically. So we're going to disable all of them, anything under hyper threading disabled up until package C state limit and CPU thermal monitor. Uh, leave those at auto. Again, disable everything up until uh, hardware prefetcher and adjacent cache uh, line prefetch. These two are, can impact performance, uh, so don't disable them, leave them at auto. Uh, the only other thing you need to do is set the XMP profile. The XMP profile will set your memory frequency. In our case, we're using some Corsair memory running at uh, 3200 megahertz. It's all set. The BIOS will set timings as well as uh, voltage, etc. cetera. Um, in voltage settings, we have to set two things. One is the uh, load line calibration. So we need to push that to turbo. We escape out of this. Uh, then we go to CPU uh, core voltage control and we need to set V core. So Load line calibration will manage the V-core that we set here, which is 1.33 in our case. And load line calibration will keep it constant and steady uh, when you push it to turbo and higher. Uh, the guide suggests using 1.28 volts. Uh, for me, it wasn't as stable, so my CPU obviously is not as good as the CPU that was in the guide, but I still managed to run five gigahertz. I just needed more voltage. Uh, and the only other thing that I've changed was going to chipset tab and <coughs> um, disabling virtualization and internal graphics. Uh, also, I've turned up the fans uh, to perform higher. It's an AIO cooler, so I've, I've, I'm also forcing the water pump to run 100%. Uh, last thing you have to do is hit F3 function three key and that will bring up the save profiles menu save the profile um, call it whatever you want to call it uh, after that you hit f10 f10 will allow you to save the configuration exit and go to windows and test and see how you go if you experience issues try using you know lower uh, cpu frequency first also check your cpu temperature in my case i deleted uh the cpu and replaced the paste and ma that made a huge impact on my overclock i went from 4.7 gigahertz to about 4.95 gigahertz range so a couple hundred megahertz increase uh, so temperatures did impact significantly on my overclock We're going to delete the CPU uh, with this Debauer uh, deleting tool and uh, we're going to delete, essentially we're going to remove this heatsink, which is what that means, and replace the thermal paste on this Core i7-8700K CPU. So let's do it. Now 
you see the little you see the heating there and there is a notch here so basically we're going to keep tightening this until we hear a, a snap or or essentially a separation of uh, heatsink uh, from the PCB itself. It is an unnerving process. Uh, I haven't done many of these things, so you know, obviously worried about killing the chip. I'm sure everyone that does this, you know, you heard that. So it creates a lot of pressure. And then basically it pushes off the, so I've just unwound it a little. It pushes off the heatsink uh, from the core itself. So we're good. So we can now undo the, undo this and we should have a deleted chip.